same time and a website and a blog? Of course there are good kids, but they're not the whole uh, the whole ball of wax here. You, you see, here's the problem. Here we just had a guy who has limited capacity in, in reason. He didn't even understand what I said. He tries to take what I said and turn that into the whole thing that I said instead of a part of what I said. I gave him a piece of philosophy that Bertrand Russell would have smiled upon. I gave a piece of philosophy that William F. Buckley Jr. would have said, Michael Savage, you are wonderful. You know exactly what you're talking about. And it went over his head. Instead, he heard all, I, all he heard me say was white boys with pants hanging down under their behinds. That's all. That's what he latched on to. Now, how he got on a national show is anyone's guess. That's a product of a number of elements, and I care, I care not to talk about it. Eric on WCFO is identifying as a purist. Please state your case, Eric. Go ahead, please. Mike, a purist is as gentle as a dove and wise as a serpent. And we have the ability to look at what the cunning snakes, whether they're Democrats or Republicans, have up their sleeve. You know, we talk about the Bible, wide is the way and narrow is the gate. And understanding that the wisdom of man is a foolishness. Okay, well, please, I, I, if I need preaching, I know there's a local church I can go to on Sunday. What are you saying? I, what I'm saying is is that we have a basis. I, I wholeheartedly disagree with you that dealing with it, that you make a deal. I, and by the way, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I see that you do, and I'm willing to take your call, unlike other hosts who have a script to read and only take I love you calls or hang up on everyone who doesn't agree with them. So I know you disagree with me, but please make your point already. Hey, you know, we know that again, hey, greater again, than hey, the okay. devil. Our people, again, the devil. Now we got a devil now. What are we talking about, religion or politics? Well, you talk. we're talking about a purist. I am a purist, and I would never, as a purist, deal with the devil to save this country. I know God. If I deal with God and I look up, God is going to save me. And our peace and strength. Oh, yeah. All right. Great. I'm, I'm glad you believe that. Tell that to all the people who went into the ovens during World War II while they were praying to God. I, I know. Thanks for the call. See, this is the problem. Again, a textbook purist who's probably never faced reality in his life. I don't know who he is. Maybe he's a martial artist. Maybe he's not. But many of these people live in a bubble. They, live in a, they don't live in the real world. I worked since I'm five years old, and that's what makes me a real person in the real world. And I know what's going on in the real world. And that's why Donald Trump loves me, because he hears himself in me. I grew up poor. He grew up rich. We grew up on different sides of the track, and that track was Union Turnpike running right through Queens, New York. Go look it up. Uh, I lived in those attached little brick houses out of a 1950s uh, black and white movie from England, one of those row houses, and I loved every square foot of that little house. He grew up in a big house in the estates, Jamaica Estates near Cunningham Park, and I always wanted to live in one of those houses. Well, right now I have a house ten times bigger than the house he grew up in. I'm still the same man as I was in that little attached house, and I'll be right back. Now, I'm going to continue my discussion of purists versus pragmatists here on the Savage Nation over the next two hours and develop it a little more because I'm talking about Trump versus uh, one other candidate. My only concern is that Trumpomania may follow the course of tulipomania. As a former botanist, I studied tulipomania, which was a period in the Dutch Golden Age, during which time prices for tulip bulbs which were recently introduced to Holland, reach such extraordinarily high levels that they eventually collapsed. And I'm going to tell you about tulipomania and pray to God that it's not going to uh, result in Trumpomania. I think that when you pump up a candidate to this extent, there's only one way for him to go. And that's what I'm worried about when you see CNN doing the job that they do so well. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowances for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two impostors just the same. If you can bear to hear the truths you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to, broken, and stoop and build them up with worn-out hands, if you can make one heap of all your winnings, and risk it on one more game, and lose, and start again at your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss, if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve you long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute, with 60 seconds worth of distance run. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. Rudyard Kipling wrote that. Great poet. I read it to both of my children, both son and daughter. It's called what it's called. It's a great poem. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. Boy, does that apply today. Does that apply today? And it applies to me, not to Trump. Actually, it applies a little bit to Trump when you think about it. He's almost lost his head a few times, but he hasn't really lost his head. And he doesn't deal in lies. And he hasn't given away to hate it, hating as far as I can tell. But anyway, look to each his own. Today we're talking about Blood in the Water by Michael Savage. And I defined it as purists versus pragmatists which we'll post up on michaelsavage.com later. It'll be linked by no one, which is why I have my own website and my own Facebook page to, to create my own media presence. That way you're not beholden to anyone. And speaking of that, during this uh, frenzy that's going on in the media, there are people who are attacking Fox News who have no media outlets of their own, and yet they write books for a living or articles for a living. And now they're attacking Fox News, committing career suicide. They'll never appear on that channel again. I have no idea why they're doing it. The reason I attack Fox News is because they have banned me from uh, their nation. Fox Nation has banned Michael Savage for many years for reasons I don't even understand. But if they want to be the England of today, God bless them. They own it, I don't. They can do what they want. But I have you, and there's a frenzy going on in the media, as I said. And people are becoming hysterical. They're breaking down on air. We can watch them break down on air. And you have the schism created by the very wise Hillary machine. That's who's created it. They have tried to turn Cruz against Trump and Trump against Cruz. And they've used and manipulated good people, conservative people, who are just puppets to create the schism. Great job, Hillary. Great job, Hillary Handlers. You have crushed the conservative block and broke it in half by pitting Trump against Cruz and Cruz against Trump. The bigger issue is the blood in the water and the frenzy that's going on. It's a frenzy based on the fact that Donald Trump is the new gladiator. He's the knight in shining armor that most American women have been waiting for. He's the man on the white horse that most men have been waiting for. And what, this, what the media senses right now is that by Fox turning on Trump, they have put a chink in his armor, so to speak. And that's caused a little bit of his blood to come out. And the sharks are going crazy. They smell blood in the water. And they want that wound opened up even further. They want to see that knight in shining armor on the ground bleeding to death. 
vanquished at last by the Democrat socialist Islamist media complex. Now, the Democrats are laughing because they see the entire Republican Party split in half with the purists attacking the pragmatists and the pragmatists mocking the purists. And as I said in the last hour, both sides happen to be right. Of course, we would all like a purist candidate. However, most every election in the past has been lost on the Republican side by purist candidates who did not appeal to the masses or by people who have just sat out the election. They've lost it because people have just set out the election if the candidates were not pure enough. I know the sentiment, believe me. This is very understandable given what Boehner and McConnell and now Ryan have done and are doing to the very voters who put them in power to advance the conservative agenda against the extremist President Obama, against the extremist Hillary Clinton, against the extremist Harry Reid as they advance towards pure government control and absolute corruption. Then you have the, pra the pragmatists on the other side, and I consider myself a pragmatist after seeing what purists have gotten politically, which is near zero. Remember this, purists have rarely elected anyone, ever, and they will never elect a, a candidate in 2016, not in the new America. This schism between purists and pragmatists is very similar to the schism even within religions. I could say Protestants versus Catholics in Ireland. Look what it did to Ireland. Or in the Jewish religion, where you have the ultra-Orthodox purists versus the Reform Movement. And you see the reformists in the Jewish religion as the pragmatists who have modified the religion to appeal to a larger mass of people. And they offend the Orthodox Jews, who say they're no longer Jews. I've heard it all my life. I've heard it in the Muslim religion. How could you explain Sunni fighting Shia? We can't even understand people blowing up the other person's mosque over a thing like that. That's the purists versus the pragmatists. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It defines almost every fight on the planet. But I'll remind you again that there's a, an adage in biology that I learned in high school which goes like this, adapt or die. Either you want to fall into an amber pit and wind up stuck in that amber pit with your purist philosophy, or you want to go on and adapt and evolve. Does this mean you have to compromise all of your beliefs? No, but it means you have to compromise some of your beliefs. And here is the most important line of the day. This is true politically as well as it is with a mate or with a career, adapt or die. Let me tell it to you again. Kids come out of college and they are purists. They are idealists. They have dreams about how the world should be. And then they run into reality with a low-paying job. And they have to learn how to compromise with their pie-in-the-sky idealism. Some go on in life and they maintain their idealism forever. And some of them succeed wildly, but very, very, very few. Most of them wind up broken people, at least very depressed people. And there's no room for purists in almost any sphere of life today except perhaps in an art studio, uh, in, in a laboratory. I'm trying to think where purists can really live. In a, in a concert hall, in a concert hall, in a laboratory, in, in, in a, uh, an art gallery, in an artist studio, rather. rather. That's a, where a purist can survive and thrive. But it's a, it's a textbook concept to believe that a purist can make it politically. Yes, there's a place for purist philosophy. We must know where we come from. So we need purists. But you cannot win a general election in the new America based on a purist philosophy. And I said the new America. Now, some of you will remind me that the last several elections were won by purists in America. But that's not the new America. I don't think you understand how rapidly the electorate has been changed by this devil in the White House. I don't think you understand the forces that are operating in this country today. And I would have every purist listening to me pay close attention do not sit out the election if Trump is the candidate because he's not pure enough for you. Try not to listen to the fools who have told you not to vote for him because you will destroy any chance we have of saving America. Now, this is not going to be my final word on this issue. I'm going to tell you again why I backed Donald Trump, and I've said it before, and I have rarely backed any candidate on this show. I don't think I've ever backed a candidate ever before Donald Trump because I'm a pragmatist.
even though he may be seen as a social liberal to so many purists, I will tell you right now that I want 